Good morning. Welcome to Heart Rhythm TV. My name is Oliver Monfredi and I'm delighted to welcome Shunmuga Ponusami from India joining us to talk about his abstract entitled Cardiac Resynchronization Therapy, Risk Stratified by CMR Imaging and Optimized by Left Bundle Branch Pacing. Results from the long-term follow-up of Madurai Left Bundle Branch Pacing Study. Thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you very much. So this is about the long-term results of our uh, Madurai LBBP study. The initial study was presented in 2023. We have shown the feasibility of using cardiac MRI for risk-stratifying a non-ischemic cardiomyopathy patient with a typical Lebanon branch morphology into low-risk group and high-risk group. We could show that the low-risk group can be given only a pacer and high-risk group will get a pacer and a defibrillator therapy. We have just extended it and uh, we have recruited close to 225 patients, classified based on scar burden with the help of MRI into low risk and high risk. Uh, low risk group received only a pacer and almost 93% of the patient in the low risk group received just a dual chamber pacemaker. Because all, in all these patients, the typical left bundle branch block could be corrected by left bundle branch pacing. Mm -hmm. Only in 7% uh, we had to put a a coronary sinus lead. In the high-risk group, based on whether it is getting corrected or not, the patient received a lot ICD or lot CRTD. Okay. The primary endpoints were uh, improvement in LV ejection fraction by an absolute number of more than 15% and composite of death, heart failure, hospitalization, or sustained VTBF. So as expected in low-risk group, the occurrence of composite of time to hospitalization, heart failure, hospitalization, death, and arrhythmias was significantly less as compared to the high-risk group. The secondary endpoints, which include normalization of the LV function at the end of six months, one year and two years, and need for an ICD upgrade, because we are avoiding ICD in a patient, in, in the group one patient, and need for an ICD upgrade, which, in, which, which is represented by a persistent LV dysfunction of less than 35 percentage, was uh, seen in 4.5 percentage in group one, as compared to 31 percentage in uh, group two. Wow. Nearly 80 percentage of the patient in group one had a normalization of the LB function at the end of two years. Wow. The major thing about this study is that we had done a subgroup analysis of group one. So group one included those patients with less than 10 percentage of scar burden. So we have seen the subgroup analysis and looked for the high risk and low risk factor. The scar was the one which decides whether the patient is going to get a positive outcome mm. or negative outcome. Mm. Though the scar is just one to 10 percentage in, in, in group one, Still, it predicted the occurrence of normalization of the LV function with an odds ratio of five and a half, and it predicted the occurrence of adverse clinical events with an odds ratio of close to three and a half. So, presence of any scar, whether it can be a zero to 10 or more than 10, I think the non-ischemic cardiomyopathy patient, you may have to offer an ICD. Okay. On the other hand, a completely scar-free myocardium, a typical left bundle branch block morphology, 94% of the time, you'll be able to correct it with a lebanon branch pacing. So in a country like India, where costs really matter, if you're going to provide a cost-effective CRT for a, for a non-ischemic cardiomyopathy without scar, it's going to give a great uh, uh, relief of burden in terms of reducing the healthcare budget. Really remarkable work. Congratulations. You, def you define risk entirely based on scar. And yet when we're deciding how to risk stratify people now for ICD or not ICD, we don't use scar burden on MRI at all. Yeah. And what comments do you have about that? Yeah, so I believe the future is based on imaging. Yeah. And uh, we, anyway, we have excluded those patients with ischemic cardiomyopathy, those with ventricular tachycardias, those with VFs, those with ICD. So the high risk group are already excluded. This included only those patients without documented arrhythmia and a typical LVV associated cardiomyopathy. Still, I believe, be it an ischemic cardiomyopathy or non-ischemic cardiomyopathy, uh, whether the patient needs a CRT or a CRTDR, we are going to follow the patient, uh, put the patient on medical follow-up. I think MRI is going to give a lot of information, both for prognosticating and for treating the patient. Really wonderful work. Congratulations. And thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.